All right. Sorry, <clears throat> I'm trying to get into the OneDrive. Mm. There we go. Got the code out of my Did we lose Leroy? Um, he has trouble joining. I'm promoting him as we speak. Um, he is in the Zoom as a attendee, but for whatever reason, he's not getting the um, Zoom panelist link. So he didn't behave, huh? Come again? He didn't behave, so you booted him out. No. No. All right. Well, let's get this party started. <laughs> With the, on that note, um, welcome everyone to the Amherst Conservation Commission meeting. It's November 10th, 2021. Um, our first agenda item or comments from the chair. I'll just say per usual, um, give a quick overview. We have some um, report from our land managers, um, presentation by land manager and assistant land manager. Um, and then we have three hearings tonight. Um, and then a couple other business items, like a couple, three maybe emergency certs um, to go through and a couple, um, certificates of compliance at the end. So we'll try to keep this moving as best we can while allowing everyone to be included as much as possible. Um, the one thing I wanted to say just to kind of like boost morale to commissioners, because we have really um, been kind of, I don't know, it's been a few, several long and rather intense meetings in a row. We got, um, somebody sent us a letter uh, just saying how much they appreciated our work. And I wanted to read it quickly. If you can give me one second. Um, here it is. So it's um, to address to me, Amherst Conservation Commission. Um, and it says, Dear Chairperson Fair, I'm just ready to compliment you and your fellow commissioners, as well as Aaron Dock on your admirable service to the town. I tuned in to last night's Conservation Commission meeting in order to follow discussion of the Mitchell Farm proposal, even though you ran out of time before that discussion. I listened rapidly as you and your fellow commissioners thrashed out environmental concerns about the preceding proposals. Uh, clear cutting to make way for 45 acre solar field, reevaluating Tanbrook status as intermittent, as intermittent streams, as examples. The entire meeting made me confident that our town water resources are in excellent hands and also proud to be a citizen of Amherst. Please convey my good thoughts to your fellow commissioners. I appreciated getting that after a few long hearings and I really want to pass on like 100% of the credit to you guys. This has been like a total marathon. So opinions on those hearings notwithstanding, like definitely I feel proud of how we're engaging with this process. So bear with me, bear with us through tonight. Um, and probably another big one in December, our December 8th meeting will probably be a pretty big one, um, but then hopefully we can, by the new year, um, things will be at least different, um, if not lighter. <laughs> so, so hang in there and thank you everyone. And especially Aaron, who does everything off offline to make this all as efficient and organized as pos humanly possible. So thank you all. And that was my report from the chair. <laughs> um, so, the next one was a report from Dave, who I understand um, was gonna be late if at all attending. So I think the next agenda item would be, um, Aaron, if you have an overview or anything to report right now before we move nope. to minute, minute. Let's, um Why don't we let Brad and Brendan um, do their presentation first? I think they're expecting to be about 10 minutes and then okay. we'll take it from there. Okay. And if we don't have enough room, enough time for minutes, that's something that can be postponed as well. So I, if we end up getting carried away. Okay. Do you see? I see them. I'm going to promote them right now. Okay. Great. There they are. Hi, Brendan. Hello, how's it going? Good. Is that puffers in your background? It is. <laughs> Excellent choice. Brad, we can't hear you or see you. Can oh. you hear me? We can hear you. Oh. 
Sorry. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm not really sure how to fix the video part. Down in the left-hand corner, it says stop video. There's an X across it. Click on it. Brad, do There's you no have a, X across it. Do you have a Go camera ahead. cover on your laptop? Uh, maybe. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> there, he is. there he is. Better? Yep. Yes. Hello. Excellent. Sorry about that. Welcome. Thanks for taking the time to do this. Thank you. So Brendan and I, I guess, just wanted to give everyone an update on uh, how things have been going and a few of the things that we have coming up in the future. Um, is it all right to get started? Yeah, please go ahead. Awesome. So the, the first slide here is, uh, I think it's actually Brendan's background. <laughs> it's, it's the uh, Puffer's Pond. And uh, if we want to go to the next slide. Um, so uh, this is a pretty good example of some of the pretty nasty trees that we've uh, been kind of tackling. Almost everything has just been some kind of crazy storm damage this uh I mean, I guess in the last five years, we've had a lot of storm damage, but this is an example of the stuff that we've uh, been kind of tackling since the last time we met with you guys. And uh, the, the two smaller pictures on the left are um, down in the uh, Amherst Woods neighborhood. Actually, I guess all of them are, but uh, you can see that the bigger picture on the right is actually a really bad one that took us over a week to take care of. The, uh, these trees were hung up, as you can see, and I, it, it doesn't really give it justice to how big these trees were. We ended up bringing our uh, 80 horsepower tractor down to kind of free them from that. You can see how one of the trees is sitting in that Y of another tree. And there's kind of a house in the background, that white in the background isn't the sun, it, there's a house there and it was a little dangerous working in someone's backyard and making sure everybody was safe, but we got it down safely and everything worked out good. So, um, Brendan, if you want to take the next slide. All right. <clears throat> All right, so some more tree work we've been doing. <clears throat> I think this, uh, the one on the left is a big white oak that fell across the the TRG path at Puffer's Pond. I think we cut this one up about, um, you know, maybe two or three weeks ago, um, got that cleared and the fencing kind of fixed itself because luckily there's a steel cable. So it kind of realigns itself once we got the tension off of it. And then the other one is on the top of Mount Pollux during one of the storms this summer. We had this tree snap off. Um, it looked like from the, the where the limb was coming from, there was a lot of rot in the tree. So the tree is uh, seems like starting to get a little old, a little sick. As you can see in like you know the outer branches on the perimeter of the tree too, like a lot of the limbs don't have leaves anymore. So um, we've been keeping an eye on that tree, making sure it stays healthy so that nobody, um, you know, get a bad storm that falls down on someone. So keeping an eye on that tree. The good news um, for the uh, the Mount Pollux top is, or the summit, is that uh, luckily we've been replanting in the past, like maybe four or five years up there. So we have, I think, three new trees that are eventually going to take the place of these old ones. Obviously, it'll take a while to get to that point, but that's the, uh, I guess, the positive note there, because th as Brendan said, this one is uh, getting to the end of its lifespan. So at some point, we're going to have to make that same decision to, to take it down. But Aaron, if you can go to that next slide, please. Um, so this is an example of some of the bog bridging that we've been doing as part of the uh, that DCR trails grant, where we're redoing a lot of the uh, the dangerous old bog bridging on the Robert Frost Trail. On the, uh, in the right picture, you can see um, just south of Station Road, there's that, uh, that bog bridging that we replaced um, in Lawrence Swamp. And on the left-hand picture, you can see that we actually had this one uh, up just off Market Hill Road. It's um, across the street from that coal zone property can't think of the name of the woman who lives there, but that one came out pretty good too. 
It, uh, you can kind of see there's one section there that's a little bit wider where the bases are, and that was a tricky spot around some roots. But uh, otherwise, everything came out really, really good. And we made a, a nice uh, little approach ramp there to make it so that people that uh, were either biking or had limited mobility could still use it. We can switch to the next one. Sorry, it double clicks. <laughs> All right, so this picture, the one on the left is kind of like in the process of being built. Uh, this summer was really rainy, as you all are probably aware. So oftentimes we'd have to wait kind of a while for it to dry out a little bit before it could get in here. Uh, here's an example of us trying to go to work the day. And as you can see, there's mud everywhere. So we decided to pause for the day on, on working on that bog ridge. And the bridging on the left looks like a uh, is that the old National, uh, the National Guard Bridge, Brad? Yes. Yep. Well, that's over by the Brickyard Conservation Area, uh, making a better approach to the uh, National Guard Bridge so people can get around um, that area towards the Casey Trail. Yeah, we had a lot of rain in that section, and it kind of washed one of the bridges off of the, uh, the ramp that goes right up to the uh, National Guard Bridge. So we had to make this approach so that people could get over that really wet section to actually cross it. We also fixed the ramp on the other side, but this was the most recent uh, fix. And as you can see, it's very temporary. It's uh, not particularly attractive, but it solved the functionality of getting people safely um, across for now. I think we're ready for the next one, Aaron. Thank you. Um, so this is the uh, Wentworth Conservation Area. We had a flail mower earlier this uh, growing season, and we used it to open up some of these uh, trails and access roads into um, the conservation areas. We used it here, and as you can see, this is, uh, I was standing near that first bridge, looking back towards Old Farm Road when I took the picture, and it opened it up pretty good so that we could get the vehicles into uh, to maintain that area. Um, and then the other area where we used the mower to do the same type of work was uh, the KC Trail off Southeast Street. We're gonna be uh, working with Aaron to replace that bridge that uh, the tractors have to go over, uh, hopefully this coming year. And we, uh, we, we did this so that we could um, potentially get some bigger trucks and uh, contractors equipment down to that to get the work done. I think we're ready. So this area is over by Puffer's Pond, right underneath the dam. We, we had an individual this spring that was stacking rocks kind of in the woods and making like a little, uh, I guess some sort of area. And we uh, kind of had to scatter the debris around, make them look more natural and return most of the rocks to the, the river bed because otherwise, you know, they're taking rocks out of the stream which is not good for the stream bed. So we had to put the rocks back in. Yeah, Brendan actually teamed up with a huge group of volunteers at one point to actually bring the rocks all the way back after Brendan and I had spent a few days dismantling some of the stuff. It, yep. it was kind of quite an undertaking, which was a bit of a pain in the butt, but it, uh, it, it needed to be done. And this individual had spent a long time uh, <laughs> building it. So it was good to get it over with. I think we're ready for the next one. So this is the uh, the before slide for, or sorry, the before slide is on the left and the after slide is on the right. And it's the uh, Puffer's Pond Perimeter Trail. And you can see where on the left-hand picture, one of the pieces of cribbing had rotted and broken off, leaving some nasty stuff exposed on the, uh, on the hill. And we wanted to protect the, uh, pond from erosion in the trail, obviously. And so we teamed up with a group of Eagle Scouts and they helped us build uh, what you can see is the new cribbing on the uh, right-hand side there. They did a really nice job and they actually just finished it last weekend. So I, th I think we're ready for the next one. So over here, this is in the plum. Plum Springs Conservation Area in South Amherst off of Middle Street. I believe that's the KC trail that runs through here. Uh, 
So I think with all the storms coming in, like August, September, this fall is really rainy and it overwhelmed the current, um, I guess, drain, like the pond lever that existed in this pond. And if you look carefully on the right picture, right underneath that big tree, there, there's a big beaver lodge and they've been damming up this whole trail. So it was impassable for a couple of weeks. And fortunately we just got a new pond leveler in and now it's finally drained back to what it was. And in the future, we'll have to go back in there once it dries out more and do some maintenance on the trail and make it more accessible for people to hike and bike. And that's one of the emergency starts that you guys are going to be seeing tonight. So just highlight that. Thanks for saying I was saying that I was going to ask. Looks like invasive it a little bit. You had to get in there in order to make that repair. We're ready for the next one. So this is the Puffers Pond uh, Beach, and these are the before pictures of when we replaced some of the cribbing. We had some rotting cribbing in there, and there was actually a bunch of sections of rebar that were coming through the rotting cribbing and were really kind of unsafe with people walking with bare feet on the beach and with the kids tripping and stuff. So um, as you'll see in the next picture, we, we put up new... Um, I guess you really, it's a good thing, I suppose, but you really can't see the new retaining wall. It's all we did was replace those uh, rotting uh, cribbing, which is just six by six timbers with new ones. In the picture all the way to the right, you can kind of see the foot of one of them, but we put in a uh, new beach sand and it actually came out really nice. It cleaned up pretty well. The, um, with the potential dredging in the future, we, we kind of tried to keep the budget reasonably low on this project, just because if we do do the dredging in the future, um, it would all kind of come out. So this was temporary, but pretty functional. This is a project that we're gonna try to be doing in the future. This is the boardwalk over at Larch Hill. Um, it's just old, as you can see, the, the decking is starting to kind of get old and worn out. Um, we've had some holes that we've patched with temporary uh, OSB plywood and some some timbers that we have around the shop. So we've been doing some patchwork to keep the bridge uh, walkable, but we will be working on uh, kind of renewing this bridge in the near future. And this is the Kevin Flood Bridge, which is off of State Street across from Puffer's Pond. And as you can see in the picture on the right, it has a little bit of surface rust. And so since it's such a nice bridge over the Cushman Brook, we really wanted to uh, get that preventative maintenance uh, going pretty soon. So I think the plan is gonna be to, uh, to really clean out between the boards and replace some of the boards as we go. And in the process, we will uh, get all the debris and detritus out of there and scrape it down and repaint it. So this is one of the things that we're gonna be working with Aaron on uh, to come forward to you guys hopefully soon so that we can get it done next growing season. And that's it, I think, right? I think so. Awesome. Well, thanks for letting us share these pictures with you. Thank you for being here to share them. Yeah, thank you for all the hustle out there, guys. I know it's been a tough season. Commissioners, do we have any questions or comments? Just thank you. Oh, yeah, Leroy. Yeah, just a thank you. And a lot of the work looks great. And I'm really impressed, but I'm most impressed by the amount of outreach you've done, including even Eagle Scouts. That really helps us, helps the town. I think it's all about outreach. And of course, the more hands, the better. So thank you again. Yep. Neither here nor there, but the Bog Bridge in Lawrence Swamp, south of Station Road, is like a toddler favorite. It is like the coolest obstacle course. If you are between the age of one and a half and four, that could like possibly exist. So, or between twenty five and thirty five. Yeah, I also think it's awesome. <laughs> it's of all <laughs> ages. I, mean, I don't know if I was ready to feel that by myself, <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys. What's the status of the Margaret Pond Dam? Markert's Pond Dam. So that's a good question. We actually just spoke with Dave Zomek about that uh, this week. 
our plan is to work with Aaron on an emergency cert, which might even be in the works tonight. I think it is. Yeah. yeah, it was already issued, but we just need to ratify it. So, so I worked with Jason Skills, the town engineer, to come up with some uh, plans for rehabbing it. We're going to be putting in some thicker geotextile fabric, pulling out some of the riprap and replacing it with uh, a little bit heavier duty riprap. And then we're going to top dress it and roll it again with that stone dust so it's accessible again. Yep. So it'll have that built in spillway again because it did function really the way it's supposed to yeah. in this last storm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that, that other than the, so the erosion control also is what we're going to have to work with Aaron on. When Too much we're doing water. All this. Too much water. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's a lot of water. I'm glad it held up as well as it did, but yeah. Okay. Any other comments or questions, commissioners? Okay. Well, thank you both very much for being here. Keep up the good work. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thanks for having us. We should do this more often. <laughs> <laughs> totally. It's good to hear like really good things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Well, hang in there. I'm going to... Um, move you guys out of being panelists. Oh no, maybe Aaron, did you already? Or I can't, oh, Aaron, can you make me a co-host? Oh yeah, sorry about that. That's okay. And then commissioners, maybe we can quickly approve or discuss, vote on minutes. And we have like three minutes before our first hearing. So Are the only mi minutes on the agenda were the 1027 minutes. Okay. I, I move we approve the minutes of 1027. I beat you, Anna. I had started speaking. I <laughs> second that motion. <laughs> All right. It sounds like we have a voice vote. Larry? Yes. Anna? Yes. Michelle? Yes, I. Leroy? Aye. Laura? Aye. And I'm an. <laughs> And I'm an I. I think Laura abstains from that one. Oh, no, I, I said I. Oh, you, you said I. Okay, you, we couldn't hear you. Sorry. She flipped. She flipped. Okay. It's an I's across the board. We have three minutes, Aaron. Anything we can do in three minutes? Yeah. Um, so, um, request for certificates of compliance, I think we can handle in three minutes. Um, there was one at um, 11 Wildflower Drive in Amherst and very easy because it was not, oops, it was not even, sorry about that. It was not even, um, there was no wetlands, there's no wetlands around it. It's, it's in an upland area. So um, I would recommend that we issue a complete, uh, a complete certificate of compliance at 11 Wildflower Drive in Amherst, if somebody wants to move that. I move that we issue a complete certificate of compliance at 11 Wildflower Drive in Amherst. Second. Second. Okay, I think Michelle, was that Michelle who got the second? All right. Second. Voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Anna. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Larry. Aye. Laura. Aye. And I'm an I. Um, so I also received a request for a certificate of compliance for Aspen Heights, which um, is a large apartment complex um, kind of behind Domino's Pizza on um, Route 9. Um, between green leaves and dominoes. And um, this one was a little tricky because there's two level spreaders in the back, which um, they are the uh, stormwater, part of the stormwater systems. And I know there have been issues with standing water in those level spreaders, but um, when I went out to look at them, they were dry and functioning. So um, I mean, considering the issues with flooding in the past that I've seen out there, I'm, I'm a little apprehensive with it, but at the same time, um, I know that they 
they had suspected that part of the reasons that they were backing up were because there was um, erosion controls right at the outlet that they thought were damming it. Um, so I don't know how exactly you guys want to handle that. Um, but if you want to entertain a certificate of compliance on it, I would recommend at a minimum we include, of course, the ongoing um, conditions from the order of conditions. Um, but yeah, knowing the history of that site, it, it's kind of, um, I, I don't even know what withholding a certificate of compliance would really do. Um, as long as there's ongoing maintenance required as part of the order, um, as part of the certificate, I think that that's really the best that we could ask for on the, on the order. I'm comfortable with that. Okay. Yeah, and is this the um, is this the area that you can see from Southeast Street when you drive by, and it's on the left? No, um, so not Route Nine. Oh. So um, this is on Route Nine, coming from the Hadley Mall towards the town of Amherst Town Line. Um, Stop and Shop is on your left, and it's uh, on your right. It's a really large apartment building. It's okay. tucked back; you can't really see it. Right. Right by Domino's. Yeah, dumb. Okay. I was thinking of another flooded I know what you're talking apartment about, complex. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd be interested to talk offline with, are you talking about um, Colonial Village, Michelle? I Maybe it's from the back, but yeah. We'll, okay. we'll, yeah, offline. Yeah. Aaron, this, we don't get, or Aaron or Jen, we, this is not one where we get monitoring reports from. Am I mixing up Aspen Chase, Chase and Aspen Heights? Don't we get monitoring reports? We, we were having monitoring reports. However, when they did their final pave and the, I actually okayed them stop to stop doing the monitoring because the site was stable. Okay. Yep. Okay, so if there are no other questions or concerns on this, we're looking for a motion. We have to issue a certificate of compliance with ongoing conditions at Aspen Heights and Amherst. Was there additional criteria? Okay. Second. Okay, voice vote. Larry. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Anna. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Laura. Aye. And I'm an aye. Okay, that was a good use of a little bit. Um, so our next agenda item is a notice of intent. Um, so I think this is our, I'm gonna open the public hearing. Um, this public hearing is now called to order. This hearing is being held as required by the provisions of chapter 131, section 40 of the general laws of the Commonwealth and act relative to the protection of wetlands as most recently amended and article 3.31 wetlands protection under the town of Amherst general bylaws. Um, so this is our 730 hearing, notice of intent hearing, niche engineering for Balfour BD campus solutions in the University of Massachusetts for proposed construction of new undergraduate and graduate housing and associated parking lots within the buffer zone of bordering vegetated wetland within 100 feet of Tan Brook. Um, so just before we get going, a quick reminder of like our process here, what we'll do is a brief five minute introduction to the project and overview of issues that are of particular relevance to us at this stage in the application. And Aaron has already spoken to folks at the engineering firm representing the applicant to kind of identify what would be super relevant for us in like a brief five minute presentation. Then we'll have um, five minutes of any site photos and input from staff, that's Aaron, um, five minutes for questions and comments from commissioners. And then if there's any public comment, we're gonna limit that to two minutes per person with a total of like 10 to 15 minutes of public comment so that we can keep this meeting moving along. We have a lot on our agenda tonight. Um, so with that, we have Brittany. I'm gonna move you, promote you to a panelist. If you are part of this application, oh, oh, we already have Jared. Aaron must be moving people. Um, if there's anyone else in the audience who would like to join for this, is there anyone else, Brittany or Jared? No, that, that's just us is fine for now. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm assuming you, did you just hear my kind of process overview? Yes. Okay. Great, and I know you've been in touch with Aaron on kind of like the focal points here. So are you willing to give us a, a quick intro and presentation? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Um, so thank you, Madam Chair, Commission members. Thank you for having us tonight. Uh, again, Jared Gentilucci with Niche Engineering. Also with me here, Brittany Veek with Niche Engineering. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Brittany in about three seconds or five seconds. We're going to try to keep our presentation to five minutes or less. Uh, we do have other members of the design team and project team on the line, just in case there are questions. But Brittany and I will cover the, the five minute presentation. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to Brittany to share her screen and cover the highlights. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Yes. I'm Brittany B. with Niche Engineering, um, and this is a project at UMass Amherst. We're located at the corner of Mass Ave and Lincoln Ave. The, this is um, our erosion control plan, and you can see the existing site colored in here in gray. We have the vehicular impervious area, and orange is the roof area. So the existing site is a parking lot along the north side of the site, and then um, additional parking and driveways on the south side with residential buildings. Um, we are adjacent to the Tan Brook, and we are doing work within the 100-foot buffer. The existing site has building and um, other site elements within the 30 foot buffer and the 100 foot buffer. And there are existing buildings within the 75 foot um, no building setback. For erosion control, we are proposing a perimeter barrier around the edge of the site. We have inlet protection at all existing and proposed catch basins and area drains. And we have a stabilized construction entrance at each of the site entrances. In the proposed condition, we're gonna eliminate that parking lot on the north side of the site and construct two residential buildings and another residential building on the south side of the site. Vehicular pavement will be concentrated on the southern side of the site. And we are still proposing work within that 100 foot buffer. Let me show you a little closer the work within the buffer. So this is the existing condition and you can see in the dark gray is the pavement, the light gray are the buildings and the green is the landscaped area in the existing condition. And this is the 30 foot buffer the fit and 50 foot buffer and 100 foot buffer. In the proposed condition, um, you can see that we are going to be adding a lot more landscaped area and reducing the impervious area, especially near the Tam Brook. Um, most of the impervious area is within the 50 to 100 foot buffer instead of up to the 30 foot. For stormwater, we are proposing to maintain an existing outfall to the Tan Brook. It's a 12 inch outfall pipe. The Tan Brook flows north to 60 inch culvert that goes through the site here. We are proposing to reroute that culvert around the proposed buildings. Stormwater will discharge through that 12 inch outfall directly to the culvert and then also to existing drainage systems in Lincoln Ave. And we are trying to match the existing rates to each of those individual design points, although they all ultimately go to the 60 inch culvert. We are not proposing any subsurface infiltration systems um, or stormwater runoff um, rate mitigation because we are decreasing impervious area on the site overall and therefore we're also decreasing the runoff rates. And we have looked at it at each design point to make sure that we're decreasing at each point and not just overall. We are going to be using water quality structures to treat stormwater runoff before it's discharged to either the outfall or the culvert. And that is kind of the summary of the site. So I think we can move on to questions if you guys have any. Thanks, Brittany, I appreciate that. It was 
succinct, but also, <laughs> yeah, but you covered the salient points, especially comparing existing and proposed conditions. I re really have relevant to our borders. I really appreciated that. Um, so I know I have a couple of questions that popped to mind, but Aaron, do you want to give us your um, kind of guidance and take from the site visit first before we get into questions? Yeah, so um, I'm just going to stop um, Brittany sharing really quick yep. so that I can go to um, the site visits. I'll start with the site visits and then um, Jen, I don't know what you would prefer as far as if you would rather um, have me kind of go through my breakdown of Q&A with the applicant first or if you, okay. I think because um, you're, I think you're going to encapsulate most of my questions. So. Okay. Perfect. Um, so this is standing at the um, uh, culvert where the tan brook comes under. Um, Aaron, I don't uh, think you went to so we point. can only see like the thumbnails in like a file manager. Oh, okay. All right. Let me just reshare one second. Let's see if that works. You guys see it now? Beautiful. Okay. Fabulous. Um, so this is the um, where the tan brook comes into the um, culvert at the parking lot um, that is um, on Mass Ave. And then this is standing beside the tan brook, kind of generally what it looks like from that area. This is on the other side of the tan brook, um, looking at the Lincoln Ave apartments facing south, and the tan brook runs parallel to the fence um, on the left side along the tree line. And then this is facing west, turning facing west. Um, the, the site is already has a construction fence around it. And the reason for that is because um, as part of UMass's operation and maintenance plan, um, they were permitted to demo this site. Um, and so they're basically going to proceed with the demolition um, imminently. And so there is erosion controls installed all around construction fence. And um, they do have um, mitigation for, um, for the stormwater and everything in place for that already. So that's gonna be happening concurrent to this filing just so that you guys are aware. And I did ask them to post DEP file number signs because I noticed they weren't posted today. So just as an FYI on that. This is from inside the site. And again, uh, just kind of some general lay of the land photos so you can kind of see what we're looking at. This is inside facing north. Um, so this is kind of facing the opposite direction. Uh, Tan Brook is on the right-hand side, just on the other side of those erosion controls on the other side of the construction fence. And then this is the parking area where the new um, buildings would be on the parking lot itself. And then uh, Brittany referenced in her presentation that there is a, um, a culvert that um, pops out into the Tan Brook and that this is the culvert and I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a moment. Okay, so we did receive um, comments back from DEP, nothing really earth shattering um, as they usually indicate because this is a redevelopment project um, that we're looking for improvement over existing con uh, conditions. They did provide to me um, proof of a butter notification. We did do a site visit today. I sent um, Jared a list of questions um, yesterday and uh, today Jared and I were able to touch base and go through those questions together, um, which was really helpful. Um, so as a result of that Q&A, Jared's going to be providing us with some additional data, including the field report from the geotechnical soil borings that were done to prepare the storm stormwater analysis, um, manufacturer specifications for the um, storm water units. There's a couple that are under consideration for this site. So he's going to be providing those manufacturer's recommendations to me or specifications to me. And then um, there's also a construction phasing plan, which has already been drafted, but it just wasn't included in the application. So he's going to be providing that. Um, in addition, I have asked for mitigation in the 30 foot um, 
no disturb zone of Tanbrook. So once they move, once they demo those buildings and move them away, right now the current plan was to do some sort of general landscaping and then lawn up to the edge of the existing tree line. And so um, what I discussed with him was basically to reestablish a natural buffer in that 30 foot no disturb. Um, so they're going to be working on that. Um, I requested specifications on reductions in impervious surface, both site wide and also within the buffer zone. Um, a revised stormwater inspections log, basically just greater detail and more of a list format. Um, and so I'm going to be sending him an example of that to incorporate into the plan. Um, calculations um, on the volume and attenuation for the Tanbrook outfall. That's a particular interest because we have an existing outfall there that's capturing um, site runoff. And we know that the, tr the treatment of the, the water that's coming out of those is going to be improved with new um, deep sump catch basins and um, some water quality structures. But um, I guess my concern was that we weren't going to be increasing volume. And so I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't going to be any volume changes um, for, you know, peak attenuation during storms. And then um, I also wanted to confirm the functionality of that pipe to make sure that we weren't connecting a bunch of stormwater structures to a pipe that was blocked or broken. Um, so I asked them to snake it and make sure that the pipe is actually functioning and, and working as it's supposed to. Um, the, there was, those are the main highlights I think that we discussed, Jared, and um, our intention was basically for him to target some of those items and then that we would touch base prior to the December 8th meeting to kind of run through and make sure everything was in order before that meeting. That's fantastic, Erin. And thank you, Jared and Brittany for getting on top of this. I mean, I heard you say, Brittany, that you know you're decreasing runoff from the site, both in total and at the specific locations where you calculate that in the stormwater model. Um, so I appreciate that with respect to that outfall. It looked like it was kind of like a funny outfall. Like it's like, um, we, we call it like perched in a stream where like right. there's nothing preventing it from like the outfall when larger, we have larger rainfall events just kind of scouring the stream below it. And in this case, it doesn't benefit anyone to have more sediment moving downstream. Um, so I would be interested in both Aaron's and your guys like instincts on that. You know, I think at, um, kind of doing anything we can to attenuate or reduce velocity and erosion in that area would probably make sense. It might not be changing the pipe sizing. It might be just changing like the head wall or adding some slope. Um, some way to reduce scour would be my like gut instinct on that. So I think that's my like, that's my one question. Then my second question is, is there anywhere aside from Tanbrook that we could put the stormwater runoff from the property? Like, did you guys investigate alternatives from that outfall um, for this site? Yeah, so stormwater from the site all ultimately ends up in that 60 inch culvert. Mm -hmm. So we are discharging directly into the culvert in some instances. And then mm -hmm. we are the stormwater systems in Lincoln Ave also discharge to that culvert and we are utilizing those as well. Um, we did not look at removing all of the runoff from Tanbrook and directing it directly into the culvert. Um, and we didn't look at any options other than going through that culvert eventually. Okay. And that, that's a really interesting point. I just wanted, when Brittany was doing her presentation, I had a, a little note written down, which I just want to clarify. So Brittany had mentioned that, um, that the, the tan goes in, or maybe I misunderstood this, that the tan goes into the 60 inch culvert. I just want to make sure, because I think that there's two separate issues here. There's the tan brook, which I believe flows towards the campus pond. And then there's that 60 inch culvert, which is a separate input, I believe, that goes down towards the, the athletic fields. So there's actually two separate sort of side-by-side -side large stormwater systems. That was, I... my, that was my understanding too. When we looked at the like ANRAD for this site, I believe we talked about kind of flow through those two alternate routes. And I, I think that what I understood, correct me if I'm wrong here, but that, that there are, there are two potential out 
outlets for the current stormwater that's proposed on the site. One of them goes directly into that 60 inch culvert. And then the other one comes out to that little outlet pipe into Tanbrook. And so one of the things that Jared and I had talked about on site was whether everything should be directed towards that 60 inch pipe and then eliminate that outfall in Tanbrook, or if we did want to continue to keep it separated. Yeah, yeah. I, I, can, I was gonna say, I can help um, just kind of clarify, you're, you're exactly right on the culverts. There are two culverts at that head wall. Actually, yeah, Brittany, if you wanna zoom in. So that culvert heading Northeast is a 48 inch culvert oh. that, does, that does discharge to uh, Campus Pond at the center. Oh, interesting. Um, and that that 48 inch culvert is at a slightly lower invert elevation at the head wall. So most yeah. of the flow goes through the from Tanbrook goes through the 48 inch culvert, the 60 inch culvert, which heads northwest and ultimately discharges at the athletic fields on the north side of Mass Ave. That culvert is up a little bit higher in elevation. So it does during larger storms, it does see some flow from Tanbrook. But I'd, I'd say the majority of storms, and, and not that we've done a full analysis of all of the flow going to Tanbrook, but generally speaking, based on the inverts, it, it seems apparent to us that the majority of the flow from Tanbrook on a day-to-day -day basis, I'd say, or 90% of the time probably, is going to the 48-inch culvert, which goes to the campus pond. Okay. So I guess the question is, are we really happy with the state of that 12 inch culvert? Are we, I mean, you know, can we make sure that we're not causing scour in the tan brook if we think that that is at all a liability given that likely our peak flows will increase for within the lifetime of, you know, this facility is, does it make sense cost benefit, but also in order to protect tan brook to divert that flow that's now going into the 12 inch, 12 inch culvert instead into the 60 inch culvert. You said there might be an elevation issue. Maybe it's not surmountable, but um, I wonder if it's worth considering. We could certainly take a look at that. I, I think one thing to consider too is that our initial approach on this was we consider that outfall as a design point for the site. So mm. if, we, if we do shift that runoff to the culvert, we are shifting it to a different design point which mm -hmm. means we're reducing the amount of flow that would go to Tanbrook in the future. Mm -hmm. And we always try to balance those stormwater flows to resource areas. So that was the reason why we wanted to maintain that outfall. Uh, we are going to uh, investigate that pipe because we are uh, right now our plans uh, are maintaining about uh, half of that existing pipe. Um, so we're actually, yeah, right there. So our, our manhole right there is where we'll tie into the existing pipe because we're okay. trying to maintain most of it to stay as far away from Tanbrook as we can. Um, the condition at the end of that pipe, uh, when Aaron and I were doing the site walk this morning, we were taking a look at it. There wasn't any, from what I saw, any evidence of any significant scour at the end of that pipe. And we are reducing the peak runoff rate yeah, to yeah. Tanbrook by about 20% in all storm events, both Peak rate and volume will be down about 20% based on the proposed design. But um, if there are concerns with any scour at that pipe, one thing I would recommend is, is we could hand place some stone at the end of the pipe just to reinforce that area to ensure that even in a larger storm uh, that we wouldn't experience any scour of, of the bed of Tanbrook. It could be that simple. Absolutely. Yeah. I haven't seen it in person. I can try to stop by and take a look. Um, yeah, so this is great. I think the the kind of dialogue you guys have going is is hitting are hitting the important parts from my perspective. Commissioners, does anyone else have any points of clarification or questions at this point? I'm seeing lots of no nodding. Yep, it looks like we're okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I again applaud like the organization and communication on this um, application and hearing. I really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, so I think, Aaron, would you mind pulling up your slides again so we can see um, the we just need a motion to continue the hearing. Well, do you want to see if there's any public input, oh, Jen? Thank you. Oh, my move? gosh. <laughs> thank you, Aaron. Of course. I remember it all the time. Um, yeah, so if I see one hand, two hands. So yeah, if you have any comments or questions, please raise your hand. And I'll remind you, um, thank you. I see a lot of hands. My apologies, thanks for reminding me, Erin. Um, as a reminder, we're gonna try to limit it to two minutes. And 
Um, while there are a lot of holistic things we can talk about in terms of the use of this site um, within like the larger whole of Amherst, I would ask that if you have comments and questions, if you could please limit them to things within the jurisdiction of this committee. Yep, Erin, go ahead. I just wanted to make one quick point, just in case this is a question that anybody raising their hand has. Yeah, I know where you're going. Yeah. Um, so the board um, at the last meeting uh, made a determination that Tanbrook is perennial um, at the 52 Faring Street site. And I just wanted to state for the record that this site actually has a um, standing ORAD order of resource area delineation, which had previously determined the Tanbrook to be intermittent, which was issued in, I believe, 2019, early 2020. And so that is good for three years. And so any question relative to the perennial status of Tanbrook wouldn't apply to this site since that determination was made prior to the analysis that, that was done by the Conservation Commission recently. So I just wanted to state that in case that's a question anybody has to just put that out there first. Yeah, and the only thing I'd add to that is just as Aaron has emphasized many times throughout this larger discussion about Tanbrook, it's a site by site basis. Um, for, for figuring out the resource area delineation for Tanbrook. Um, so in this case, it is the ORAD states that it's an inter intermittent stream. Um, thank you. All right, again, two minutes and um, please try, try to keep comments and questions relevant to our jurisdiction here. Um, all right, Freddie, um, I'm gonna allow you to talk. Welcome, if you could introduce yourself um, and ask any questions or make any comments. Hey, I'm Freddie Manning and you probably answered the question I had because I was going to ask you, when was the determination of Stanbrook as intermittent when it passes the UMass property? And you're saying that was done in 2019. The permit was filed at the end of 2019 and I believe the order was issued, I wanna say in early January of 2020. And we never heard about that. There was a public hearing. Um, so um, you would have been notified as an abutter at the time. If you're an abutter, you would have been notified. So what time. happens if Tanbrook is now um, determined to be perennial? Nothing uh, changes the intermittent status of Tanbrook relevant to this application. So, so I just want to just really to address the question though that Freddie is asking in the sense of protection of Tanbrook, like if it would be any different if it was considered perennial. In this case, what we're seeing is an improvement over existing conditions where we're seeing a dramatic reduction in impervious surface on the site in general and also within the buffer zone. And under the Rivers Protection Act um, for redevelopment sites, which this would qualify, um, that is basically what they require is to provide an improvement to existing conditions. Now, a site that is undeveloped, you know, um, forest land, as an example, would be a completely different uh, set of performance standards that would need to be met um, under rivers protection. But in this case, because it's a redevelopment project, it's really not reviewed much differently um, as it would if it was perennial. So this will, will this affect the decision, the upstream decision? No, no. no. Okay. It's a completely separate case. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Freddie. Um, all right, uh, I have Edwin next up. Edwin, if you could introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Edwin Gensler. I live at 43 Fearing. I taught at UMass for a long time, and I've gotten a few babysitters out of those Lincoln Street apartments. So um, uh, I read through the as much as I could. My gosh, it was hundreds of pages, and I, I, I'm really not an expert. But I have, once again, this will be anecdotal. I have walked that area quite a bit. I walk my dog down there all the time. The culvert itself where the water leaves Tanbrook and goes into or under the visitor center. Uh, there is significant erosion going on uh, as you're facing, I guess it would be north off to the right side of that. I don't know if anybody saw that in their site visits or the engineers took a look at that, 
but uh, there's quite a bit of water coming into there and those culverts uh, aren't taking all the water away. They're not very well placed. Um, and then the water has to go someplace. So it's running off to the right and probably going under the visitor center. One of the pipes is too high. The other pipe is almost always blocked. Uh, UMass physical plant comes out there on a regular basis to clean it out. But when it's backed up, it's like a dam. Um, so I hope that that whole area, how that water is discharged, gets a significant look and that those pipes um, be sort of rearranged to better hand. Uh, you're, you're saying 20% reduction of water flow, but my guess is the water flow is maybe higher than some of your numbers from 2019 are. Um, but that looks like a real thorny area to me. So that's just an anecdotal observation that I have. And I, I hope people take a look at that. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Edwin. We appreciate the local knowledge and input. Um, I don't know. I mean, Aaron, I know you're very familiar with that culvert and that head wall. Um, this relates to my concerns about, you know, making sure we're protecting from scour and erosion. We just don't want any more incising into Anbrook in that area, both just for the long-term life of that infrastructure, but also for water quality concerns in Tanbrook. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, so there's a, there's a couple things. So that 60 inch pipe, my understanding is that that's being removed and replaced at a different um, angle. Um, the larger 60 inch one, is that correct, Jared? Yeah, he's giving a shake. Yes, that's um, correct. Yep. So that will help, I think, with some of the flow coming down from um, into Tanbrook now, or from Tanbrook into those culverts. Um, but that the 48 inch pipe would remain the same. Now, some of what Edwin might be seeing, there is a lot of debris and material that does come down. And, and in all fairness, a lot of the material that comes into Tanbrook is coming out of stormwater structures um, underneath the town of Amherst. And so um, I do know that periodically that the university does have to scoop material out to unclog those culverts. And that's why there's grates there and they um, have to dewater a lot of that material before they even take it off site. So it's something that we're aware of. This site should be making some improvements too, but it is separate from the, that smaller culvert that comes out where we were talking about scour. But um, I think this project is definitely going to be an improvement over a lot of the conditions that Edwin has described. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, Edwin. Um, next up, Barbara. Um, you should be able to talk. Hello, Barbara. If you would mind introducing yourself and then making yes, any comments. I'm, I'm Barbara Pearson from the um, neighborhood to the south of um, this and to the slight west of, of the Tanbrook upstream a little bit. Um, I really am just curious now to ask you about the 52 has disappeared. 52 fearing has kind of disappeared from the um, actual schedule. It's now miscellaneous other business. And is it going to get further discussion? I, my recollection was last time it, the discussion kind of closed precipitously. And I don't know that anybody's seen the, the new the revised drawings, have they been submitted? Um, so I can take a crack at that and then Aaron, you can cover what I missed. You, don't, um, you may not want to talk about it now, just tell us when you're going to talk about it. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. So this is about a different fearing, a different hearing, excuse me, um, upstream onto Anbrook um, that we just, we closed the public hearing at the last meeting. So we just have to ratify what was, what is and will, is will be and will not be included in that resource area delineation at this meeting. Um, the it's up to the applicant what happens next. Um, so I can't say when if there'll be another hearing. Um, but if they open another hearing, Aaron, will they notify abutters again? Yes. Yep. If yeah. this was to so, come before the board again. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Barbara, you would get another notification when if and when that hearing is that a new application is submitted. So do I understand you to say that 
you can just either say yay or nay on it and that's the end of it. We don't get to see it again until there's a until they submit plans. There'll there'll be a motion on it tonight, Barbara. Yeah, uh, but, after yeah. we close our all of our hearings out for the night, there'll be a, that'll be the first order of business to issue okay. that ORAD. Okay, thank you. That's my question. Yep. Thanks, Barbara. Um all right, it looks like we have two more. Linda. Welcome. You should be able to talk. You yes. can introduce yourself and ask any questions. My name is Linda Slakey. I live at 18 Nutting Avenue and Tanbrook is my back lot line. Um, I have a, a question related to uh, the issues that both Freddie and Barbara raised, um, specifically the relationship of any findings in this project. It, it was very helpful to hear um, that the Treating it as uh, treating Tanbrook as intermittent for this project is really just for this project. My my question is, um, can you make it part of the record that the classification for this project cannot be put into evidence about the intermittency of the stream at other places? Because in fact, a piece of the argument that the 52 Fearing Street project makes to rebut. Uh, what happened at the last presentation is that this um, the, the the project on Lincoln Avenue uh, has classified this uh, stream as intermittent. So I would like to see it part of the record of this finding that this cannot be used as evidence in upstream cases. So this hearing isn't about the resource area delineation. Um, this is about a redevelopment of the site. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, I don't, Go ahead, Aaron, but they're not that that resource area delineation with deciding that Tanbrook was intermittent at this site is a completely separate closed issue. Um, I, I, do, I do forward. understand that, and I apologize that I'm yeah. not aware enough of process here, but but that hasn't prevented the, the folks who want to declare it intermittent on Fearing Street from using this case as evidence. So I just hope that you'll say the same thing to them, that that's a completely separate issue and they can't use it as evidence of the intermittency of the stream. Yeah, I believe the record will show that we have said that. We've made it very clear that it's a case by case, property by property, application by application determination of intermittency versus perennial status for Tanbrook. Yeah, that's very helpful, thank you. And also I just wanna um, say that I'm really grateful to uh, the whole project uh, for actually reducing the impact on Canbrook by pulling the, the buildings farther away and, and having more modern approaches to mitigation than were the case when Lincoln Apartments were built. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, the last, it looks like the last hand raised Springfield. I can't see the full name, House Association. Um, yeah, hi, be. my name is um, Catherine, and I'm representing the um, corporation that owns the sorority house Kappa Kappa Gamma at 32 Nutting Avenue. Um, and I just kind of wanted to share a little bit about our experience um, as being a butters of the tan brook. Um, we do have periods where when the brook overflows, you know, the our property in the back, we have some grass and some gravel. Um, does get pretty wet um, and like a little soppy, but um, I wanted to sort of echo the other um, comments about appreciating the efforts this project is taking to sort of um, reduce the stress on the brook. Um, we, we appreciate that. Great, thank you very much for being here and for your, your comment. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, I don't see any more hands up. Um, just let me check the list really quick. Okay. Looks good. Okay, so I think we're looking for a motion to continue this hearing to December 8th. Aaron, yes. would you mind putting your slide? Your, or, does, do we need I don't, I don't actually have a draft motion for oh. the continuation, okay. um, but yeah, well, I have. time. Uh, 735 on December 8th. Okay. All right. I move we continue this hearing for the uh, notice of intent for UMass undergraduate and graduate housing 
and niche, con niche construction to December 8th at 7.35. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Laura, I got the second on that one. All right, voice vote, uh, Larry. I forgot to unmute. <laughs> uh, Michelle. Aye. Roy. Aye. Anna. Aye. Laura. Aye. And I'm an aye. Thank you, Brittany and Jared. It sounds like we'll see you on December 8th. Great. Thank you very much. Have a good yeah. night, everyone. Yeah, you too. Goodbye. Um, okay. I think we're good. All right. Great work, everyone. Um, all right. Next one. And this is a continuation. TRC for ASD Shootsbury MA Solar LLC for the construction of a solar photovoltaic energy generation facility and access road and buffer zone to BVW at Shootsbury Road. Um, so again, I'm gonna just review our protocol before we get into the nitty gritty on this one, um, in case you've recently joined. Um, what we're gonna do is a very brief update um, from the app, the representative of the applicant on changes and updates from the last meeting. Um, as far as I understand it, there's information outstanding. So I think this is more just going to be a quick review between Aaron for town staff, Aaron and the applicant of exactly what is outstanding and the timeline in which we expect to receive that information. Um, so that will kind of be five to seven minutes max combined between the applicant and town staff. Then um, commissioners, if you have any questions or comments or anything to add to Aaron's list, um, please take a look in the folder. It's pretty exhaustive. Um, we definitely need this information before we can move forward with this hearing. Um, and then we will open up for public questions and comments. Again, I will say, you know, forest health and relationship between human health and large tracts of forests are intricate and intimate and the understanding of the trade-offs between something like a solar array and a forest are also intricate and complicated. Um, there are a lot of ways we could frame that, pull it apart. Unfortunately, that's not the jurisdiction that we have with this commission. Um, the levers that we have to pull are around protecting the wetland resources on the site. Um, so the best way that we can do that in this case is really a concern for runoff, runoff quantity, runoff quality, and habitat, um, making sure we can protect the resources here as much as possible. So while I know this is a bigger picture issue and there's a lot of interest, concern, and passion around this, I would ask that your questions and comments um, are relevant to the jurisdiction of this commission. Um, we very much appreciate you being here. We very much appreciate the engagement on this, um, but we have, we have long meetings, a lot on our agenda, um, and we want to create a good, keep a good balance between moving things forward, but including everyone as much as we possibly can. So with that, um, I'll look for Maria. Thank you for raising your hand, Maria. Promoting you to a panelist. Andy, I see you. Promoting, oh, should be promoting you to a panelist. Did that work? There we go. I see you. Hey, hi guys. Hi, thanks for having us again. Yeah, thanks for being here. Um, so I understand, um, I know Andy, you've been going back and forth with Aaron a fair amount on kind of information outstanding. Aaron, what is kind of the most efficient way here? Um, should you wanna just go through exactly what information we need and kind of in what timeline right now? Yeah, so, and Jen, I wanted to touch base with you quickly too on how you wanted me to present this. So I kind of presented it in um, the format of a motion more or less to request um, a list of information within the next 30 days. And so I don't know if it would make sense for me to run through that list and then do the motion again, or if I should just sort of read through the motion that I drafted. Um, and put that on the screen so that if anybody wants to move it, they can. Um, and what makes okay. the most sense from your perspective? 
Well, just in the interest of a fair dialogue, Andy and Maria, are you guys clear on that information outstanding? I mean, I, is there? I believe so. I, I think that, that we're clear on what information is outstanding. There was a lot of discussion at the last meeting um, okay. about what information was needed, um, including you know, responses to Aaron's questions, responses to the questions and concerns that were raised at the last meeting and responses to DEP's questions. Um, and we are working on that and we have already communicated to Aaron that we are planning to have that at least two weeks in advance of the December 8th meeting. We had actually requested to just continue to that because we wanted to not waste your time with, with a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. If we hadn't, didn't have it already for you yet. Um, but it's our understanding that there were potentially a number of rebutters that didn't get to talk last time. And since we're trying to be comprehensive, we're we agreed to come tonight so that we can you know, get a, make sure we have a full picture of, of what any other concerns are so that we can make sure to address them. Great, thank you. Um, Anna, did you have a comment or question? Um, yeah, I just, if we're not gonna run through it, which I completely understand, can you just clarify for folks in the audience where they can find that? Um... No, I think we should run through it. Oh, it's okay. just the okay. question. Thank I just you. wanted to make sure that Andy and Maria were clear on it, but just so that if, Awesome. Aaron sets it up as a motion, we can, you know, move forward in that way. So somebody doesn't have to go through and repeat everything Aaron said. I mean, Aaron, Aaron hasn't formally shared with us what she shared with you, but uh, I think based on the conversation that's been had that there shouldn't be any surprises in there. Right. I mean, I think most of it was probably conveyed with my questions, but um, I, I can just kind of start running through that if that would be helpful. Um, and yeah, that sounds good. How, how, okay. how you have it set it up here, and I think is great. Okay. So, um, do you mind sharing the, the screen? Yes. Yep. I can do that. I'll be quiet now. Okay. So, so this is the draft motion, and this incorporates a lot of the elements from questions that I had previously asked TRC as well. Um, sort of just a compilation of everything I think that I had in my notes. Um, so the, the motion would be uh, to move to require the applicant submit the following information within 30 days to resubmit the application materials to include the field soil evaluation, revise hydrologic model and adjust and resubmit the plan design according to the results of the field investigation. Um, to complete due diligence investigation to determine the depth to groundwater, surface to groundwater elevation, and to provide a plan showing the boring locations, existing elevations, and groundwater depths. Um, the Town of Amherst or Conservation Commission representative requests to be present for soil evaluation to conduct a spot check of the test pits. Uh, to resubmit plans that are in full compliance with the mass stormwater standards, uh, resubmitted plans should contain an engineer stamp and um, must include the on-site sediment disposal area if one is being used. Submit a TSS removal worksheet for each of the treatment trains. Submit an operation and maintenance log that will be used in conjunction with the operation and maintenance plan. Submit a revised phasing plan. The submitted plan was inadequate and should be revised to incorporate staff's pre-permitting recommendations. Answers uh, should be provided in writing to the questions sent to TRC on October 15th from staff. Answers should be provided in writing to the questions asked by the commission and staff during the public hearing um, on October 27th, 2021, um, excuse me, and the public at the uh, meeting on October 27th, 2021. Uh, ground survey showing existing conditions and an engineer stamp is required for plan design submissions. Um, Submit a plan showing the construction period, erosion and sediment controls, including sediment traps and basins, um, their size and locations on the site, including again, on-site sediment disposal areas on the submitted plans. Submit a revised grading plan that includes the erosion and sediment controls on one sheet because the erosion controls uh, locations seem to be inconsistent with the grading plan on some plan sets. 
and then uh, submit a decommissioning plan that includes buffer zone mitigation and replanting at the decommissioning of the project. Okay, thank you, Erin, for running through that. Commissioners, any points of clarification or questions at this point? Let's see if I can see it. No, Aaron, that's very comprehensive. Sora, I agree. Okay, um, so then I think we should open this up for, oh, Michelle, was that a question? Nope, okay. Oh, you're muted. You're good, okay. Um, all right, so um, we'll open this up for public comment on the, oh, Andrew, did you have a question or comment? I'm sorry. I, I do. I think Maria, you might have something to add as well, but um, I wanted to just circle up on the soil evaluation really quickly. I think Maria, you're probably gonna say the same thing I'm gonna say, um, is we are working to get this scheduled and get people out there to do the survey, but due to um, constraints around getting somebody out there, it was estimated that could take as many as three or four weeks. Uh, from now, and I just would not want to try to rush something at the end to get you something that might be incomplete to meet the deadline um, if we're not able to get somebody out there sooner. And I don't know Maria, if Maria, you have something else to add on that. Uh, I my I was going to request because this was not discussed with us um, that when you make a motion that you not include the within the 30 days clause because there are certain pieces of information like what Andrew pointed out that we can't guarantee that we can get you within 30 days um, because they are dependent on contractor availability to get to the site um, and then subsequent time that the lab takes to actually run some of the tests that you want. Can you, can you be more specific which ones you're, you're talking about that require more lead time? Um, frankly, anything that's affected by the soil evaluation, which can be many of these pieces, because the soil evaluation affects the stormwater items that Aaron has asked about in terms of redesign. Um, so there's information here that we cannot necessarily provide you within that time frame. We are absolutely going to provide it to you as soon as we can, and we're going to provide everything that we can um, prior to the next meeting as we discussed. Um, but there are items that, despite our efforts over the last couple of weeks, that we don't have a solid schedule on yet and that impact other things. They, they have a ripple effect within this list. Yeah. I yeah, I guess I understand that a lot of field data is needed to confirm the stormwater um, management plans here. Um, well, Aaron, let um, so I'm I'm I don't want this to be a piecemeal effort. I think we need the soil evaluation and the resulting ripple effects through edits the stormwater management plan um, before we make the next move on this hearing. Um, I think having a reasonable time limit makes a lot of sense because we need to keep this hearing moving. Um, so I'm trying to think of a compromise approach. Um, uh, hang on. Okay. Um, Aaron what would the protocol be? Like, can we continue? So we would have to continue to December 8th at this point, and that's within 30 days. So there's no way we'd have this for the next hearing. The next hearing after December 8th is, I don't have it on my calendar yet. Um, yeah, I mean, I have, December 22nd, I'm usually like in the, pa in the past years, we've canceled the second meeting in November and December, just because of the proximity to the holidays. It's been um, difficult to get a quorum on those days. Mm -hmm. um, so that would push us to- January um, 12th, it looks like. Right. I mean, <clears throat> Thank you. 
it's it's tough because it feels like this due diligence should have been completed before the application was submitted. And, yeah. And I'm also struggling with that. Um, this is just an incomplete application. So we're stuck between a rock and a hard place here where we're going to have to continue this for months in order to get what we need um, to even assess the application. Um, yeah, I, I, I do I do question why that work wasn't done originally. Um, and maybe it's moved, maybe we don't need to get into it now, but um, you know, especially especially given the wetlands that are around the, the proposed solar farm, this is pretty standard work um, right. that would be expected. So so one yeah. avenue commissioners should know about is we could deny the application and then hypothetically the applicant could com can, you know, complete this application and resubmit and we would therefore close the public hearing and reopen it if and when there was a new application. Um, yeah, and I, I, I would think, be, I think I, I would be interested in hearing from Maria and team when they think they will be able to submit this detail. I know you have your hand up, Maria. So what, what I wanted to say is that there is a fair amount of information that was requested that is not tied to the stormwater. And that is the information that we were planning to get to you, you know, a minimum of two weeks before the next meeting. And we think that it would be helpful for you to have that information and that given the desire to try to keep meetings shorter, that it would actually be beneficial to discuss that information on the December 8th meeting so that we don't have quite such a huge update when yeah. this information is ready. Yeah, I just see the stormwater management here from in both a quality and quantity standpoint as like a linchpin of this of this application. Um, Laura, am I off base on that? No, you're spot you're 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 spot on. Um, I'm in I'm in agreement with that. I feel like um, everything should be completed before we move forward because if we were to do a peer review on stormwater or on the um, natural resource, you know, wetland side of things, um, it's just doing it piecemeal. I'm afraid is going to completely railroad our meetings with this um, project for the foreseeable future. And I would rather have everything submitted comprehensively as we would expect any application to be submitted and then review it at that time. And would you mind um, stop sharing for a second just so I can see every, everybody? Um, Cause I just wanna run through um, the commissioners. Thank you. Um, so first off, commissioners, anyone else have any input on this particular question or questions in the procedural side of it? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in agreement. This is a pretty long list of things that should have been submitted at the output. And I share the same concerns as Laura and Jen have stated. Thanks, Michelle. Um, yeah, Larry. I'm inclined to just reject it now and let them come back with a complete plan. Yeah, yep. So we can deny the, the application. Yeah, and come back with it complete. Then we can start. Um, I see you, Maria. Um, Aaron, go ahead. So I hear where everybody is coming from. And I think that there's really two recommendations that I would make um, because I think this is all very important. I would either one recommend that the commission proceed with the with the um, motion that I put on the table and request everything within 30 days. Um, at that point, see where things stand in a 30 day period and what's outstanding and render a decision from there. And or ask the applicant to withdraw the application until they have the application materials yep. um, completed and then resubmit them to, to us at that time when we can um, basically reinitiate the review process as if we were starting from scratch. But isn't 30 days from now past our next meeting? 
So that wouldn't help us. Um, just so I want to just keep going around the room for a second while we sort that out. Leroy, did you have any input on this? No, is that a no? Okay. Anna? Um, I mean, I, I think I really, what Michelle and Laura said is, is definitely resonating uh, for me. My only other little flag is past January. I will no longer be on the commission. And so for me, that's the other consideration of, of just making sure we don't have a similar situation as has happened before where we are down people who can vote on this. Right, um, and Fletcher is missing tonight. Right, exactly. So that's my other thought. Yep, thanks for bringing that up. Um, okay, Maria, do you have another comment? Um, I saw your hand, your hand is raised. I'll unraise it. Um, just that we came tonight at at Aaron's request, even though we requested a continuance so that we could actually be bringing you information. Um, so we we would very much appreciate the opportunity to not be denied tonight based on you know, information that we've, it is a lot of information that we've really only had two weeks to work on. Um, it's typical to submit the application the way that it was submitted. There's a lot of information that's been requested here that's very reasonable to request, but it is not technically a requirement within your regulations or within DEP's regulations. So we are doing everything we can to provide it for you, but we feel that the application was submitted appropriately and we're doing everything we can to get you the additional information. We completely understand that you, know, you don't wanna start any kind of peer review until you have everything. And we are completely on board with that. We are, are trying to get you what we can in advance of the December 8th meeting in, in good faith that we are doing this work. Um, and we, we'd appreciate the return of that good faith by keeping the public hearing open. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that the board close the hearing to deny it tonight, um, mm -hmm. because I think that we have to give the applicant adequate time to um, respond to our request for information before taking that step. Um, DEP would see that as us not being reasonable to um, allow them time to mm -hmm. provide us with information. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think 30 days is a reasonable time window in the sense that um, with an application like this, that is a standard expectation that within 30 days requested information should be provided back to the commission. And at that time, the commission could reevaluate if there were outstanding pieces of information that um, hadn't been submitted yet and to consider allowing more time or what next step they wanted to take at that point. Jen, I think we should hear from Andrew who also has his hand. Yeah, I was just gonna say, Andrew, thanks for your patience. Oh, thank you. Um, no, I, I think that Maria and I, we're all in agreement that our goal here is to provide you with all the information you need. Um, and I certainly don't wanna rush it and I don't wanna make sure that, I wanna make sure that there's no quorum issues either. I think that was a really excellent point that that could be a problem. Um, so uh, I, I really appreciate Erin's comment there and that if we try to really double down and see if we can get somebody out on site earlier to do this, this work, try to get everything wrapped up beforehand, um, 30 days will be tight, but I think we can press to try to make that happen. And then for Erin's suggestion, we can come back and then it can be um, evaluated at, at that time if that is agreeable to the rest of the, the commission. Yeah, and I think 30 days is kind of a, a 
it's just a standard window, but uh, to Jen's point, it is 28 days until the 8th of December. So um, if we could do 28 days instead of 30, um, would that, is that? That's okay, yes. Okay. I'm really happy with that compromise because I just wasn't, it wasn't squaring with me that we would have the next meeting and then have the, <laughs> the requested deadline for the new information, Anna. So, sorry. So if the deadline is 28 days, then we won't have time to read it in advance. Is that, or it does, so are we then giving them like 20 days to, so I'm, I'm working backwards here to make sure mm -hmm. it's in our packets ready to be read. Well, I think the first thing is let's get the information in our hands and let's yeah. say we want it by this date and we might not be, that doesn't mean that on the 8th, we're going to be That's like good. complete, everything's going to be thoroughly reviewed and right. But the idea is to get what we need in our hands so that we can start processing that and figuring out what the next step is. Okay. So thank you for a good faith effort on both sides. To yeah. Oh, absolutely. Everything moving. I just didn't yeah. want to accidentally be giving them like 10 days to, yeah. Right. <laughs> We, we yeah. appreciate no. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we yeah. also get like everything is hard right now. Like the world is difficult right now. <laughs> we schedule everything and we're going into the difficult weather season. So good faith effort to, you know, get through that list in 28 days by our next meeting, I think would be, I feel good about that compromise. Commissioners, does anyone feel not good? Got a thumbs up, got nodding. Thumbs up. All right. All right. Great. Thank you, everyone. Great teamwork. Um, so we need to open up for public what? Yeah. participation comment at this point. Um, so if you've joined us um, from the public for this hearing and you have a comment or question, um, please raise your hand. Uh, again, I'll just remind you, we're asking for two minutes, a two minute time limit um, and to keep your comments and questions relevant to the jurisdiction of the commission here. Um, so with that, Ira, you are allowed to talk. You could introduce yourself. Welcome. Assuming you can hear me. Yep. Okay, I'm, I'm Ira Addis. Uh... Uh, I'm a physician. I live at 192 Shootsbury Road, uh, not exactly abutting the project, but uh, across from it. Um, uh, let, let me be clear right from the beginning that I'm quite totally opposed uh, to this project, and that's why I'm, I'm making my statement. Uh, I also want the commission uh, to know that, that I appreciate what the commission has said so far and the approach of the commission and what I can see as the thoroughness of the commission, as well as the people who've spoken before me about in more fine points about why they oppose uh, this project. Um, uh, I, um, I consider uh, my views to uh, be generally made from uh, a, what I think is a well-informed uh, stance and, and some critical thinking. Um, I'm totally opposed to this industrial project uh, because of three main points. One is that given the state of the environmental concerns that we all have at this point, uh, this is just a bad project right from the beginning. Um, to me, it's like the emperor has no clothes, uh, but I understand why we're discussing the color of his threads. I know why the commission is doing that, but I, I think the emperor has no clothes. And if we ignore that, I think we're missing a major point in, in this discussion. Um, uh, I think this project should never have been approved in the beginning. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that uh, it may well uh, wind its way through methodically uh, through the system and eventually uh, come about. But I think it is a morally and ethically flawed project. Uh, I actually believe, though I don't know, that many of you on the commission probably feel the same way. Um, 
The second point I want to make is that this is an industrial project, and I don't think it should even be considered until the town of Amherst has uh, passed its, uh, its own bylaws concerning this type of project. Uh, I think it's, it's wrong to be considering this at this particular time. Uh, my third point is that despite uh, any protestations uh, from the people uh, who really want this to go through, uh, I believe that the driving force behind this project uh, is simply money. I think that, uh, that there is not a shred of interest in the greater good for the forest, the community, uh, around immediately around the project or the Amherst uh, in general. So I realize these are my opinions. I appreciate you uh, hearing them. Uh, and I would really ask you to do everything you can to either stop this project or delay it as much as possible uh, for those reasons. So I thank you. Thank you for your input, Ira, and for being here tonight. We, we appreciate where you're coming from. Um, we, you know, again, our jurisdiction is to uphold the wetland protection law in the state of Massachusetts, the wet, Wetland Protection Act in the state of Massachusetts, and the bylaws for wetland protection in the town of Amherst. And as you've seen, we are thoroughly and methodically doing everything we can to protect the resources associated with this site. Um, and we will continue to do that. So um, thank you again. Um, and uh, next, I see Jack. Jack, you should be able to talk. Yes, can you hear me? Oh, yes, hello. Yeah. Thanks, I'm Jack Hirsch at 400 Flathills Road. And I just had a couple of questions that I was hoping you could clarify. Um, this is a project that's an industrial grade project sited in a residentially zoned area. And I assume that area is in chapter 61 right now. So how much work can they actually do preparing for this project and who protects and monitors the resources in that area during the work? So that was one question. And then if I can ask one other question, I've always been um, um, uh, curious about um, how can you delineate wetlands and things like that in the fall and in the winter. It seems to me that a lot of that involves looking at vegetation. Um, so um, isn't that a seasonal type issue? Those are great questions. Thanks, Jack. So um, I'm gonna let Aaron field the last one because um, wetland delineations are, are super intricate and have many different kinds of indicators in the state of Massachusetts. Um, but for, to your first question, so let me make sure so the first one was like you were asking if this is a in, you know industrial project in a residential area that is out of our jurisdiction. Um, well, so I understand I'm, it's not in your jurisdiction, yeah. but you're you're still monitoring the resources. Yep. So yeah. let me let me finish. Um, so in the last meeting, Dave Zomack indicated that there would be. Aaron, am I mixing up hearings? Is there going to be a zoning um, application? There, yes, I believe that the, they're waiting on some additional information as well for the zoning. Okay, so hearing. that's another one to tune into, Jack, is that there will be a hearing on this project in the zoning, town zoning committee, right. um, where they might approach that question. I do not know out of our jurisdiction again. Um, like I said, after Ira's comment, our job, our oath is to protect the, the wetland water resources um, on this, this site. Um, and we're doing that the best of our ability. Um, so we have some isolated wetland and then we have Adams Brook that runs through there and we're getting into the bordering vegetated wetland um, of that brook. And so we're monitoring everything we possibly can to make sure we protect that resource um, from a water quantity, water quality, and habitat perspective um, on this application. So we take that very seriously. Um, so Aaron, do you want to answer the question about wetland delineation? Right, so, th so the wetland delineation was actually done last year um, during the growing season. 
So, um, so it wasn't done during the winter months. Um, it was done during, um, we actually completed it um, in the, in the spring and um, early summer, we had completed the wetland delineation and there was a, a peer review. So a third party independent peer reviewer represented the conservation commission. And um, from the original submission, there were many changes. We found, we found many um, additional wetlands. And so we did thoroughly examine the site to make sure that there was nothing was missed. And also Aaron, can you just talk to like the different ways we identify wetlands that enable us to understand delineations in yeah. other yeah. than the summer season? Yep. So um, generally speaking, we would look at um, soils and dominance of wetland vegetation. And um, so, um, and, and hydrology is really the, the, the indicator and cause of both of those um, factors in the environment. So um, when the delineation is done, that's what the, um, the uh, wetland scientists are doing in the field as they're checking soils and they're looking for the presence, the presence of dominant wetland species in the field. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Thank you for being here um, and stay tuned for more on December 8th. Uh, okay. Guinevra, I think you should be able to talk. You're muted. Um, yes, hello. My name is Guinevra Lodi Nabad, and I'm from Northampton, Massachusetts. And I came tonight not on this issue at all, but I'm just here listening. <laughs> and um, so, you know, first of all, I guess when I've been watching about this, my, uh, okay, so let me just explain a little bit. I'm a student at Holyoke Community College, and my major has been sustainable studies, um, and it's kind of changing a little bit, but I have been a gardener, and I have been a land steward for 52 years now since I arrived, and um, I do have some thoughts about this. I guess when I was looking at the design itself, um, having worked in construction, um, in the Boston area and across Massachusetts and different parts of Massachusetts and watching them change over time. I am just really surprised that in this day and age that um, there would be any kind of a design that would show up on the table that is not absolutely taking advantage of water, period. Um, and so I feel like what I saw tonight with that design is flawed in and of itself because of the times that we're in right now. And in terms of the hydrological cycle, um, I'm also thinking, you know, geez, you know, those are the buffer zones for, for Tanbrook, but um, is that, I mean, you know, everything that goes and sinks down under there is eventually gonna make itself to, to Quabbin in some one way or another, it's very close. And so those are just a couple of the thoughts I have and thanks, that's about it. All right, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, all right, next up, Robert. You should be allowed to talk if you'd unmute yourself. Hi, my name is Bob Mullen, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, I represent Fred Hulk of 317 Shootsbury Road, Road. I'm his son-in-law. He's a direct of butter. He did receive a letter as an abutter. And he also submitted a letter last meeting, I think October 27th. And we weren't sure if you read it into the record. We liked, we asked you that if you could read that into the record, if you have that. Yeah, let me look. Fred Hulk, 317 Shootsbury Road. Yep, I appreciate that, Bob. Hold on one sec. You know what? I think that that one actually came in the night of our last meeting. Yes, I think it came in late um, afternoon. Okay. So sure. it may have popped into our packets really late in the... Um, and for the so, last meeting, Aaron? For the, yeah, let me just um, double check if it's in here. Hold on one second. That was October 13th. No, what was our last meeting? October 27th. Going... Uh, I don't see it in here. Sorry, I remember that one coming in. Like it came in literally, like as the meeting was happening. And, okay. Um, I think because of that, I 
filed it in the the previous um uh, yes could, could you um sir could you tell me your uh, the uh, name of the person who sent the the message uh, charlotte hulk h-o-u-c-k his daughter charlotte hulk thanks bob bear with us oh no problem i appreciate madam chair you know let me even speak at this evening this evening's meeting um oh okay so i see um charlotte mullen is that correct, correct. That okay. is correct, Erin. Um, so I can read it if that's okay, because I have the email right in front of me. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks, Erin. Um, so it says, Dear Miss Jock, I'm writing on behalf of my father, Fred Hoke, um, who resides at 317 Shootsbury Road in Amherst. He's been a resident of Amherst since the mid-1970s, a business owner in town, and a resident of Shootsbury Road since 1987. My father's in a butter to the proposed solar project and is against the proposed project. To place a large solar farm in this location will require clear cutting of a large area of forest, uh, negating the benefits to the environment and air quality provided by trees. There's also large areas of wetlands and vernal pools that while mitigation is planned will undoubtedly be affected. While he supports the need for solar and alternative energy sources, this is not a proper location. Please read this correspondence into the record of tonight's meeting. I appreciate that, Madam Chair. Can I also say a couple of things on my own behalf? Uh, sure, but just to address that, you'll relay to your father-in-law that, you know, again, that we're doing everything we can within our jurisdiction to protect the resource areas on this site. Um, I'm sure he, he will appreciate that. But he's very concerned about the property up there. It's a beautiful place. They moved there a long time ago, and uh, they really cherish the, the forest behind them. Um, Again, my name is Bob Mullen. Um, I'm not from Amherst. Obviously, I, my in-laws always told me I couldn't pronounce Amherst correctly. I do apologize that to everybody out there now. But uh, I do uh, represent Fred Hulk also. Um, and destroying 40, I believe it's 45 acres of forest, obviously has tremendous impact to the habitat and the environment. And correct me if I'm wrong, I was looking up the regulations for the wetlands protection bylaws of Amherst. And in there, collectively, the resource interests protected by that bylaw includes private water supply, um, also protection of wildlife habitat, protection of rare species habitat, among other things. You know, I know you, you spoke about stormwater management tonight, but I haven't heard much about the wildlife habitat. I know there's bears out there. I know there's uh, deer, obviously moose, people have said there's some been moose sightings. I just wanna know what analysis and research, if I can get a copy of a report of how this, these animals are gonna be protected because once you destroy 45 acres of, they eat a lot of grass and other vegetation, are they gonna come up to my father's in-law's property and, and destroy that and other people's property? I mean, I don't know what the plans are, but I hope the town of Amherst has some type of uh, more than just mitigation, something that is proven to protect the wildlife. Uh, tell me if I'm off base, but I mean, that's part of the wetlands protection law that I'm reading. And also has any research been done in rare species out there? Because there's always rare species when you have vernal pools and everything else. I'd like to know uh, if, have, if uh, the firm that did the uh, work out there, if they, uh, collectively sampled any of the rare species out there, if they found any, documented, and where we go from here. Uh, the other thing I'd like to know is how are you gonna protect the private water supply? People have wells up there. And I don't know how deep the wells go, but destroying a lot of the uh, land taken, you know, just ripping the surface, cleaning the, sur the surface of the land out there. I don't know how it impacts the wells. I just like to, have you have some documentation that it doesn't impact that and prove that. If you can't do that, I would ask that you ensure that the applicant can put a couple million dollars into an escrow account for years to come to protect these people's private water supply because they can't be, they can't afford to keep on drilling for wells out there. They have to protect their private water supply. And I ask that the commission here make sure they protect it for them because that's part of the wetlands protection law. Um, I have a lot of other things to say, but I don't want to. I think we're uh, about at time. I, um, I, I know. I appreciate Madam Chair for allowing me to speak this evening. Thank you very much. Thanks for being there. And I think um, I'm going to 
Yeah, Maria, I see your hand. Um, let us respond unless it's procedural. Do you have a, go ahead. Uh, I, I just had a couple things, but if you want to talk first, if you don't cover them, there are just a couple things I, I want to say. I was just going to actually, um, after I ask Aaron a couple questions, ask you to speak to the kind of habitat connectivity allowances um, in the design. Um, but so, Aaron, um, can you just give for the like give Bob some background on this water supply issue? So it's complicated um, in terms of designation of you know water supply areas. Do you feel equipped to answer that question now, or do we want to talk about it at the next meeting? Well, so I think I think a lot of the questions that Bob has, um, the information that we are requesting is going to provide us with information from which we can assess a lot of the questions that he's asking. And right now, um, we need that information in order to get at his questions. Um, the only exception to that is the rare species question, um, because this isn't a mapped natural heritage endangered species area, which doesn't mean that there might not be endangered species. It just means that they haven't been documented by the endangered species program prior to this filing taking place. So um, they're all great questions. Um, it's just that we, we need more information in order to be able to answer them. And um, Jen, could I just make a request that we don't, that um, I don't yeah, think we should continue yeah, yeah we, we should more. we should probably take like two or three more comments for the yeah, night so and then Stuart and Michael have been on the list since the like kind of first few minutes of public comment and then unfortunately um whenever you've already had a contribution tonight and unfortunately I think that's going to be the limit of our time for this hearing tonight um before we go there though Maria did you want a chance to respond to answer any, can you clarify any questions about the design with respect to habitat connectivity? Um, so we we talked about this briefly at the last meeting um, that there is a wildlife gap around the entire facility that allows for the movement of small and up to medium sized animals throughout the site, um, which includes species that are dependent on vernal pools. Um, but I also basically just wanted to say what Aaron said that uh, these questions were, were either already raised by Aaron or by others at the last meeting. So they're, they're on our list of things that we're working to provide um, more detailed answers for. Um, and the only thing I'd oh. add to that, yeah, thank you, Maria and Aaron. And the only thing I'd add to that, Bob, is just for, you know, your questions about connectivity of surface water and groundwater are complicated and something that we have to be very detailed in our quantification and classification of. So that's a lot of what um, Aaron's detailed questions are that we're that we're gonna try to tackle at the next meeting. Um, so, yeah, Michelle, I just want to say that um, Maria commented small to medium sized animals, but I think it's a six inch gap under the fence, right? So, just to clarify, the kind of size animal we're talking about it, isn't it, like a raccoon. Um, a a um, raccoon would be able to get through under it. a six inch. Maybe a very, very small one. Um, just one question. Um, I saw wildlife habitat evaluation in the index of acronyms, but I couldn't find it in the document. Um, I assume it's in there, but I can't find it. So maybe Aaron can get me there later. Sorry, that's all. No, thanks, Michelle. That's great. All right, um, in the interest of time, we are gonna take two more comments and we're going to limit them to two minutes. I'm doing my best, friends. Um, Stuart, you should be able to talk. Hi, my name is Stuart Schulman. I live at 237 Shootsbury Road. I am in the butter. I'm a former professor of environmental science and policy at Drake University. I would like to comment about the procedure. I'm an expert in how regulations are made at the national level and at the local level. So I'm not familiar with your procedures. I'm learning as we go here, but I'm quite confused why you are considering an incomplete proposal. I thought the discussion earlier was going in the right direction when you talked about withdrawal or denial. And 
the negotiation in this process with the applicant over some sort of compromise seems procedurally flawed. And so I'd like to object strongly to that. I believe an incomplete application should not be discussed at a two hour long meeting where we get two minutes for public comment about all the things people have talked about, critters, wells, habitat, trade-offs, why we're building in a forest, something that belongs on the roof of a mall. I mean, there are a lot of things we could talk about here. I'd also like to say just a recommendation. Andrew, if you think Maria is your best representative for public face of this, you guys should look for a new spokesperson. Okay, I but think that that's not comment. very that's appropriate. Weird. Stuart, you know, I, Those yeah. comments, you know, the head shake. Can you, can you mute him? Thank you. Yeah, um, unfortunately, Stuart, we appreciate your input on the procedures and your passion about this project, but one of the things we hold the most important is respect um, and fair discourse um, on the Conservation Commission in Amherst. Um, so I um, thank you, uh, point taken, and we're gonna move, commissioners, does anyone else have any comment about how I handled that? Okay, okay. Thank you. So now, Michael, you should be allowed to talk. We see you're here, but we can't hear you. Hi, Michael Lipinski. Okay. 167 yep. Shoots Ferry Road. An unfortunate abutter to this trivest. You know, this project. I just want to remind people, I know that you people on the uh, Conservation Committee are very familiar with this because you've been working on this since 2019, but I'd like to remind other people that TRC is the company that was hired to try to find the wetlands and couldn't, and then had to have another person come along and show them where they were. They're the same people now who've come up with a plan to protect the same wetlands they couldn't okay. find to yeah, begin Michael, with. Yeah, Michael, again, I appreciate what you're saying here. You know, well, the, the point is that the resource the whole project is, is separate from this project and you really please be respectful of everyone involved in this project. Is that, but the fact is the whole project, this 400 page project that they refer to is based on incomplete information and without doing something as basic as soil testing and water table determination. So what you're seeing here is a pattern. It's a pattern of submitting incomplete and inadequate information and then beg for more time. So I think we've been pretty consistent that I think we've put, put it on the record with, by the commission that we need more information and we put a very tight timeline on the time to get that that information. And so that's the way we've chosen to move forward with all parties working in good faith to have everything we need to evaluate this application. Again, our job is to protect the resource and we are doing everything we can to protect the resource here. Um, so unfortunately, thank you everyone for being here. I know that this is a contentious project. I know that we all care a lot about that both the process and the outcome. We very much appreciate you being here. We very much appreciate appreciate the input and the discourse. Um, we will continue this hearing until our next meeting on December 8th. So we'd encourage you um, to join us then um, for, for the next step in this, in this application. Um, so commissioners, unless anyone has anything else to say or add here, looking quickly, Laura, are we doing okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, then I think we're looking for a motion. And remember, this is 28 days. Yeah, thanks. I move to require the applicant to submit the following information as outlined by Aaron within 28 day period. Seconded. All right, voice vote. Michelle. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Anna. Aye. Laura. Larry. Aye. And I'm an aye. All right, Andrew and Maria, thank you for being here. Um, and we look forward to the, seeing you on December 8th.
So um, just we should make a motion to continue the hearing to December 8th at oh, 740 sorry. as well. That's OK. Included. No we need a motion to continue okay. the hearing to December 8th at 740. I move we continue just what you said. I move we continue uh, the this hearing to December eighth at seven forty p.m. Second. Oh, I think Lori got the second there. <laughs> Voice vote. Anna. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Laura. Aye. Larry. Aye. And I'm an aye. All right. With that, thank you, Maria and Andrew and everyone else who joined and participated in this hearing, we appreciate it. Um, and we'll see you guys on December 8th, it sounds like. Thank you. Uh, Great. Thank you for having us. Have a nice night. You too. Too. Um, all right, Laura, thank you for being here for that hearing. Are you gonna leave us? Or are you hanging with? Uh, no, I'm leaving. Bye, everyone. Night. Feel better. <laughs> Feel better. It will. Thank you. All right, another continuance. Sorry, did somebody say something? Oh, we have a date joining us. Um, all right. Looks like our last hearing. This is the ANRAD SWCA for Barry Roberts slash Stanley Mitchell Life Estate for confirmation of resource area boundaries at 246 Montague Road. Um, oh, and the applicant requested a continuance to the next scheduled meeting. So it looks like, unless I'm, am I missing something? Um, we just actually, the time would be adjusted because we've got a couple other continuations. So yeah. um, it would just be 7.45 instead of 7.35. Okay, so it looks like we just need a draft motion to continue this hearing. And for those members of the public um, who are here about the resource area delineation at 246 Montague Road, um, tune in to our meeting at December on December 8th. Um, hopefully the applicant will be present with the next step in the process. Oh, I see a new comment from Hilda. So I'm gonna quickly take public comment before we issue the draft motion. Hilda, is it, um, you should be able to talk, is this about the yes. two six Montague Yes, thank Road? you very much, Jen, and I appreciate everything you guys are doing to protect our town. I have a question and I'm running out of power, so I'm glad you asked me. Um, I, I got an email today that the new, uh, let's see, 100 year flood plans are, back in town for approval. And I I noticed that the flood plan maps include areas that are not included in the data that you already have for the wetlands. And I'm wondering how those two will mesh together. In, 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 in other words, what is the impact of the new flood plan maps on this application? Yeah, so I got that email today and I know that those are a good portion of them are out for public comment right now. So they're not approved yet, um, Aaron. So I'm assuming that means that they're not relevant for this resource area delineation. Um, so what I've been doing with applications is actually looking at the new boundary and the old boundary to make sure that um, both are taken into consideration. Um, in most cases, it hasn't changed very dramatically between the old boundary and the new boundary, but I will, to Hilda's question, have a look at that and do a, say, um, a comparison um, from the old boundary to the new boundary to see if there are any significant changes and um, make sure that if the new boundary is showing additional areas that that's incorporated on the and red plan. Thanks, Erin. Yeah, I'll look to out of curiosity and just because those new maps are pretty interesting. Yeah, thank you, Hilda. That's a great point. We'll, we'll take a look at that in time for our next meeting. All set? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, with that, uh, Jack Hirsch, you still have your hand up. Can you either take it down um, if you're listening, I, oh, okay. Uh oh, new hand, Janet. 
Janet, is it about this hearing? You should be allowed to talk. Yes, please. Janet okay. Keller, um, Pulpit Hill Road. Um, I just have a, a process question, please. Um, what happens next time on December 8 if um, another continuance is requested? There are um, a lot of continuances and yeah, and that that's that becomes a concern um, as to whether or not um, people come to the hearing, um, whether or not anything is 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 going to be said substantively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is that when this is on the public to keep track of when we have our next hearing. I don't know that there's a limit of continuations. I know that in this case, it's for good reason. Erin, do you want to weigh in on that? Yeah, so our peer reviewer did a follow-up um, site visit on Friday and asked for some plan revisions based on that site visit. And so um, the reason for the continuance, um, and again, uh, that there was a discussion had as to whether it would be productive for us to discuss those those issues tonight, but um, for various reasons, um, they did request the continuation. But they can they can request as many continuances as they want. It's really up to the commission to put a fork in it and say we want it by this date. Um, as far as we're not going to continue um, extending this, either make the revisions and submit them to us by X date, which is exactly what just happened with. Um, the previous hearing, we said 28 days, we want all this information. And if the information that we've requested isn't submitted, then at that point, we have the authority to say, you know, you didn't give us what we wanted. So um, um, they are, there has been a back and forth and a dialogue. And I think yeah. we need to have a look at the plans and, and um, make a decision at the next hearing, but it's, it's somewhat fluid and really up to the commission's discretion. Yeah, so I realize that wasn't super concrete, Janet, but in this case, we are making progress on this um, hearing. It's just that the information wasn't available for this meeting. Um, the next one we expect to be substantive, and if not, we will consider our options. Um, so I'm sorry that you have to continue to keep track of it, um, but we appreciate you being here and hope you join us again on the 8th. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Okay, that's it. Um, no more public comment unless I think Hilda said what she needed to say. So it looks like we're looking for a motion to continue the hearing to December 8th at 7.45. I move we continue to December 8th at 7.45. Seconded. All right, voice vote. Anna. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Larry. Aye. And I'm an aye. Great. Okay, so that's it for the hearings. 915. Hang in there, everybody. We're gonna uh, get through this. It's gonna be yes, nice. we're very close. <laughs> we can do this, guys. Um, all right. So we should get our other business, the ORAD for 52 Fearing Street. Right? That would be the next item, Aaron. Yes. Can you guys see this page? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. okay. So um, I've been through this with a pretty fine tooth comb um, and the plan set that was originally submitted, our peer reviewer went out, provided comments. Um, SWCA provided us with a revision back at the last meeting and then um, asked us to close the public hearing at the last meeting. The, our peer reviewer had provided us a report. I provided a timeline to the commission um, in your packets. And the items that are sort of, they have a little checkbox next to them are issues that were not incorporated revisions on the final plan set from SWCA. So based on that, this is my recommend recommended motion that somebody make. Um, and I would be happy to read it um, to make that easier for you guys to actually just say so moved at the end. <laughs> 
or or you I can have also to. read it if you want to break okay. reading I say, Michelle unmuted I, like, like I can read I'll it. read it okay. all right Michelle we'll see. so first does anyone have any que any questions um <laughs> do you want to maybe on. just explain what it what this motion means like the impact of this or the impact yes yes, yes. Yeah, and we should say first that the public comment period is closed. Um, so if you're here to witness this, thanks for joining. But unfortunately, there's no public comment on this at this point. Yeah. So basically, what the commission is saying is that the ORAD is determined to be inaccurate, that the, the um, plans that were submitted with the application are considered to be inaccurate. Um, and so for that reason, the resource areas in, on the plan cannot be confirmed. And the reason for that is because there were wetlands that are bylaw specific um, that were not incorporated onto the plans. There are um, Wetland Protection Act wetlands that were not incorporated into the plan. Buffer zones weren't shown on the plan. Bank flagging that was asked to be added to the plan was not added to the plan. And then bordering land subject to flooding that was identified on the site was not added to the plan. So um, there's there are those issues. And then as well, in addition to that, there is the issue of the um, perennial status of the um, Tanbrook, which was um, decided upon at the last meeting. Um, so basically what this, this motion does is basically just wrap all of those things into an, uh, a tidy package so that I can issue the ORAD and document all of the, um, all of the items that were um, inaccurate on the plan set and then um, add in the finding of fact that the commission approved on October 27th. Thanks, Erin. And with that, I will move to issue an order of resource area delineation for 52 Faring Street, citing the following. The commission has determined the order of delineation to be inaccurate. The resource area boundaries on the final plan <clears throat> set submitted by SWCA are inaccurate and cannot be confirmed. Keep reading. <laughs> oh, all of it. Okay. The Conservation <laughs> Commission peer review. Stockman Associates found the bylaw wetlands BVW on the site was not included on the plan revision submitted by SWCA. Additional WPA wetland BVW was excluded from the plan revision submitted by SWCA. WPA and bylaw buffer zones were not shown on the plan revisions submitted by SWCA. Bank flagging was excluded from the plan revision submitted by SWCA. Bordering land subject to flooding was excluded from the plan revision submitted by SWCA. More details provided in 52 Faring Street timeline, which will be attached to the order and included in the final finding of fact, as well as content contained in the commission approved finding of fact reviewed and approved on October 27, 2021, determining Tanbrook to be a perennial stream. Second. <laughs> Bob, Michelle. All right. Voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Anna. Aye. Larry. Aye. Leroy. Aye. And I'm an aye. All right. Thanks for reading, Michelle. Thanks for writing, Aaron. All right. Certificates of compliance. We did. Emergency starts. You want to run us through it? Yes. Um, so I included photos in your packets, but um, there's there's three and there's draft motions affiliated with each. So I'll just kind of run through each of them. And then if you guys want to do kind of clustered motions, that I think would be the fastest way for us to roll through this. Um, green leaves had a clogged culvert um, that uh, caused a head wall to um, fail and the roadway uh, started to collapse. And so DPW contacted me that they wanted to do the repair. Um, I got authorization from Dave and we issued a um, uh, emergency certification for them to do the repair. I was out there today to take a look at it and the repair looks great. They've, um, they were able to um, clear the blockage in the culvert. They are currently laying geotextile um, fabric and um, restabilizing the headwall and um, fixing the road. And so um, that is the first one uh, on the list. Second one is Plum Springs. That one was presented in the um, PowerPoint that Brad and Brandon um, presented earlier today. There was a flow control device that basically regulated the water level um, at the Plum Springs Conservation Area and that flow device failed, but um, basically we, so it failed and it was flooding and it was 
threatening Middle Street and also um, flooding private property that was surrounding the conservation area. And so an emergency certification was issued to repair that flow control device. So that's the second one. And then the third one was also briefly discussed um, because Larry had asked about Markert's Pond Dam. Um, one of the storms recently washed out some stone dust, caused some movement of riprap. Um, and uh, as a result, an emergency certification was issued to um, restabilize that area and um, repair some of the armoring. I have no follow-up questions on that. It all sounds appropriate for emergency certifications. Um, commissioners, any questions or concerns? It's like, no. All right. So can we have like a bulk draft motion, Aaron, is that okay? Um, I would just, if somebody wants to kind of like how we do minutes, like somebody just move, yep. move to ratify, second vote, move to ratify, second vote, just okay. move through it in that fashion. That would be the fastest, I think. Okay. I move we issue an emergency or ratify the emergency certification for green leaves. Seconded. Leroy. Aye. Anna. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Larry. Aye. And I'm an aye. Uh, I move to ratify the emergency certification at Plum Springs issued to the Integrated Wildlife Management and Town of Amherst Conservation Department. Second. I think Leroy got it. Leroy. Aye. Larry. Aye. Anna. Aye. Michelle. Aye. And I'm an aye. And I move to ratify the emergency certification at Margaret's Pond Dam issued to the Town of Amherst Conservation Department. Second. Leroy I got it. Leroy. Aye. Larry. Aye. Anna. Aye. Michelle. Aye. And I'm an aye. All right. And the only other thing that we missed was um, approval of the minutes uh, from October 27th. So I don't know if somebody wants to. I move right. we approve. Go ahead. Move we approve the minutes from October 27th, 2021. Seconded. Leroy. Aye. Larry. Aye. Anna. Aye. Michelle. Aye. And I'm aye. All right. That's all I've got for you guys tonight. How about can I move to adjourn? Uh, I think I think. Oh, oh I think Dave, Dave, Dave wants Dave wants to talk. Dave, <laughs> poor Dave. Dave's Dave, you're on, on your mind. Something mic. from meeting this to meeting. This is a fragile tonight. situation. I know it's late I'm for everybody. I really appreciate y'all being here. Very quiet at town hall. I can tell you. Um, uh, so I decided to take a couple of meetings. So I just wanted to let you know, I, I did uh, meet with the CPA committee earlier and presented, um, I think Aaron provided you with those uh, $50,000 proposal for trails and uh, $150,000 proposal for Hickory Ridge. I think just for Aaron to know it, I think it'd be great if, if maybe in one of your upcoming meetings, if we can sneak in maybe a six or eight up, a minute update on Hickory Ridge, that would be great. I think for the commission, just to let you know where we are, our public outreach, what closing looks like and, and all of that. Cause we, I think before the end of the year, really fingers crossed, we will own Hickory Ridge. So I'm, so does that sound good, Jen, to try to yeah. squeeze that in when we can, the holidays great. are coming up and all that. Yeah, so I'm I was usually, definitely playing catch up on I'm that. I usually try to be the bearer of all good news I did just want to mention, and and this is a tough, tough update for me to provide, but I'll give you more at the next meeting. I have been corresponding with the Department of Conservation and Recreation. And unfortunately, some of the work we did down at Bay Road at the parking lot, at the new parking lot that is so well, has been so well received and so well used, unfortunately was not in sync with a conservation restriction that is held by the Department of Conservation and Recreation. It was, it turns out, long story short, and I'll have more on this next next meeting, um, there was some ambiguity in our um, uh, in our GIS mapping online. And unfortunately, the CR covered more of that property than we thought. Mm -hmm. So DCR is willing to work with us. I don't think it's the end of the world the conservation values of the property in my opinion have not been compromised um and and i'll talk more about it and show you some of the the, the things that i'm providing for them 
they have a meeting next week on the 18th where will where they'll be talking about this so i've met with them um i think they're willing to work with us but you know it's 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 on me i should have you know i should have been more on top of that with our team working with the planning department so um i don't think it's it's a a, a major a major thing but it's it's uh, just not something i like to do so Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll have some materials, some supporting materials that I'll share with you for the next meeting and give you an update on that. So, okay, thanks, anyway. Dave. Yeah, I mean, uh, it seems like the use of that, that parking lot has been awesome and it serves to protect, you know, the resource more by having a safe place to park that's not like in the middle of the field. So, if well, again, I'll have, I'll, I'll have more details in two okay. weeks. But okay. one of the things when you're driving by there, one of the, the reasons we did it was actually to consolidate the parking and the yeah. impacts that are happening right. on both sides of the road. Otherwise, we're it was going, just creeping in. Yeah, we're going to remove those in the spring. Essentially, we'll um, restore those areas on the north and south sides of Bay Road. And then I think what we'll do is we'll put in boulders um, because it's really a public safety issue. And that's one of the reasons we did the parking lot so that people weren't crossing that busy road doing crazy turnarounds and U-turns. Um, but again, we should have, um, unfortunately, our GIS, uh, and we need to correct it on the GIS, um, there was not a full representation of where the CR covered. So um, uh, these things happen. It's never happened to me before or us before, but we'll learn from it, and, and I'll have more for you in two weeks. OK. Thanks, Thanks Dave. Are we meeting in two weeks? Or whenever your next meeting is. I'm not yeah, sure. December 8th, I think, is our next meeting. We had concerns about quorum at the November 24th meeting. Yeah, so, and that might be a good thing um, is uh, to, to just state for the record that the yeah. uh, meeting on the day before Thanksgiving, um, it looks like we're not going to have a quorum for that meeting. So um, does, the next yeah. meeting would be December 8th with the commission. Yeah, we should, we, Fletcher didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll let Fletcher know. Okay, great. Yeah, so we got we get a break, guys, December 8th. I move we adjourn. No second? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everyone's exhausted. We're just glazed over. I'll be here for a second. I seconded. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, Larry. Hi. Michelle. Hi. Leroy. Hi. Anna. Hi. And I'm an I. All right. Enjoy the holiday. Thanks.